Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor, I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and I share these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas. I try to try a couple new recipes every week but also to motivate you to cook more for your family. So if you like these kinds of videos, I hope you will subscribe down below. Come back, see the weeks coming up. I also share grocery hauls every week so you can kind of see what I'm buying to make these meals. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. Friday night we had Tex-Mex chicken and rice casserole. This is a family favorite that I've been making for probably almost 15 years. Um, I got a, the cookbook that this is in for Christmas when I was 17 for my dad. And this is one of the first recipes that I ever made from it. And... This night for dinner, my sister was coming over and my brother and my uncle, and I knew that this was a recipe that could feed a lot of people and that everybody liked. So that is why I chose to make this. The recipe will be linked down below as well as that cookbook that I've had for like 15 years. So to get started making it, I just warmed up some olive oil in a skillet. I did about a tablespoon and then once that was hot, I added in about half of a cup of some chopped onion and just let that cook for a few minutes so it could like start to soften. And then once that had softened, I'm going to add in one package of like the chicken flavored rice aroni mix that like the rice and the vermicelli and then also the seasoning packet from it and let that cook for a couple of minutes. Once my rice was like a little bit browned and toasted like I wanted it to be, then I added in two cups of water and one 14 ounce can of chicken broth or I just made 14 ounces of chicken broth. And I stirred that in and then I brought that to a boil. And then once that comes to a boil, you're going to want to reduce the heat to like a medium low, cover it and let it simmer for about 18 to 20 minutes. And once that time's up, all the water is not going to be absorbed, but that's okay because we're going to be adding to this and putting it in the oven. So here's what that looks like. As you can see, there's still a lot of liquid, but the rice is pretty much done. So I'm going to be adding in some seasoning. I did some basil, some chili powder, and some cumin and black pepper. And then I'm also adding in some tomatoes that I diced, some diced green chili peppers, and then some cooked chicken that I already had. This was in the freezer. I just thawed it out. I had cooked it with like some taco seasoning in the Instant Pot a while back. So I just thawed that and I like put it in the microwave for like a minute so it wasn't like cold going in the pan. But yeah, added all that in. It started around really good. And then I'm going to transfer this to a 9 by 13 inch baking dish and just make sure it's really mixed really well. It was kind of hard to do it in the skillet, but I didn't want to dirty like a bowl because the recipe recommends mixing in a bowl, but I like make sure it's fully mixed in the casserole dish. And then I'm going to top this with some shredded cheese. I always do more cheese than the recipe calls for. The recipe calls for like half a cup, but I don't think that's enough. So I just cover the whole top of it with some cheese. I've done cheddar before. I think this was a taco style blend. So I add that on top and then this goes in the oven on 425 for 25 minutes. And then you could just eat this as is. I usually let it sit for about five minutes. Um, and it's just like a chicken and rice casserole. But I find you can stretch it further and it feeds more people if you serve it with like some things that you would put on top of tacos, lettuce, salsa, sour cream, some extra cheese, avocado. So I had all those toppings out. Um, I think Elijah was the one who didn't want any toppings. And then I had like everything on it. And then as I said, my brother, my sister were here, my uncle, and Andy ate this and it went a lot further by having toppings for everybody to put on it. Saturday was New Year's Eve and we did some like buffalo chicken tenders or just regular chicken tenders for the kids. I get these crispy chicken tenders from Tyson at uh, Sam's Club and then I just cook them up in the air fryer. Um, I do like 375 for like 10 to 15 minutes just keep an eye on them so I don't burn them. And then I did some of these quick fries. I got these at Aldi and I did those in the oven for eight minutes and I think they cook at like 425. They taste like McDonald's french fries. They're great. Um, and super quick to make. 
So I used some of the Buffalo Wild Wings mild sauce and so did Andy when he came home. Um, but the kids just ate their chicken plain and then they dipped it. Lily actually has been liking the Polynesian sauce from Chick-fil-A. And she also eats sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's now too. But for the longest time she didn't like any sauce. So now she likes those sauces. So this is what we had for New Year's Eve dinner. Um, we don't really have something that we always eat on New Year's Eve. We've done ribs in the past. We've done wings in the past. I wanted wings, but I didn't want the work of wings. So that's why we did the buffalo chicken tenders. But let me know down below what you eat for New Year's Eve. I know I asked if anybody had anything that they ate on New Year's Day um, over on my community post. Um, and a lot of you had like traditional food that you eat on New Year's Day. But I'm curious if you have something that you also eat on New Year's Eve. So Sunday was New Year's Day and growing up we never had a tradition of like what we ate on New Year's Day. I'm from the South, I know, but we just didn't eat traditional like Southern New Year's Day food. Um, we don't eat a lot of like traditional Southern food, but Andy and I decided that we wanted to create a tradition for New Year's Day. And we love spaghetti, so that has become our tradition. We had it like one year and then we were like, let's just keep doing spaghetti. Um, sometimes it's quick and easy, like frozen meatballs that I cooked in the air fryer. Sometimes I make homemade meatballs, but we always have spaghetti. I think this is the third year now. Um, I know a lot of you did tell me you eat traditional food. I loved hearing about all of y'all's uh, New Year's Day traditions. It was very fun to read all of your comments. Monday night we tried a new recipe in the crock pot. This is slow cooker chicken pot pie soup and we all loved it. I do have a couple changes that I will mention at the end though. So I'm starting off by adding some onion, carrots, and celery to my crock pot and then I'm going to add some seasonings. I'm going to do some parsley, paprika, oregano, salt, and pepper and then I'm using the Knorr chicken bouillon instead of like uh, chicken broth. So I added in some of the chicken bouillon powder and then I will add in some water to go with that. And then I'm also adding in two cans of cream of chicken soup. And then I'm just going to mix that all together really well. The mixture is going to be really thick. And then I'm going to add in my chicken breast. So I had one like really large chicken breast that came out of a package of chicken. And so I froze that by itself because I knew like it was like enough food for like one whole dinner so instead of adding like a couple like smaller breasts I just did one giant one but if yours are smaller definitely use more chicken so I nestled that chicken breast down in the mixture and then made sure to cover it and then I cooked this on low for eight hours after eight hours this is what it looked like the chicken was nice and tender and cooked through so I just went in and shredded it up I know you could take out the chicken and shred it like if in your mixer or whatever if you wanted to but I just find it's easier just to shred it up in there and you dirty less dishes once the chicken was all shredded I added in one drained can of peas and one drained can of corn and then I just let that sit with the lid on it while I cooked up some biscuits I just did a can of like cheap biscuits from Aldi but you could make homemade biscuits if you want to and then we're just gonna serve this the kids and Andy wanted their biscuits on the side but I did my biscuit on top the only thing that I would change about this recipe is maybe go in with a little bit of cornstarch at the end to thicken it up a little bit it was supposed to be a soup but I think we would like it if it was thicker like a chicken pot pie like the liquid was just a little bit too thin for us and we wanted it to be a thicker consistency um, and basically just like a quick and easy, like an easy chicken pot pie in the crock pot, not necessarily a soup. Um, so I would make this again, just add in some cornstarch mixture at the end, like when you add in the peas and corn so that that sauce mixture can get thickened up a little bit. Tuesday, I made this one pot taco pasta. I have made this before. It's just one of those quick and easy, like similar to like a hamburger helper kind of thing. So I'm starting off by just browning one pound of ground beef with a little bit of taco seasoning. If you're using a taco seasoning package, I would recommend using like half the seasoning and then adding the other half later. So once that gets like almost all the way cooked through, I'm gonna add in some minced garlic and let that just continue to cook until the meat is fully cooked. 
Then I'm going to add in the rest of my taco seasoning, about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of tomato paste, a cup of beef broth, and a cup of chicken broth, one can of Rotel tomatoes with the green chilies, and one cup of milk. And then I'm going to make sure I mix it all together really well and then bring that to a boil. Once it came to a boil, I stirred in eight ounces of some pasta shells, and then I reduced the heat to like a medium low and put a lid on this and covered it and let it cook for about 10 minutes until the pasta was done. And then after that time, you want to make sure your pasta is fully cooked, and then you can just stir in some cheese. I did some cheddar cheese and Monterey Jack cheese. The recipe also said Velveeta, but I didn't have any of that, so I just did extra cheddar. And then once all the cheese is melted, you can just like let this sit on low heat and it'll start to thicken up the longer you let it sit. So I usually let it sit for like five minutes and then it's ready to serve. Wednesday night we did some air fried salmon. So usually I either make this salmon or lemon pepper salmon. Um, but I've been wanting this again since the last time that I made it. So I just took my salmon and brushed it with some of the Chef Chamois garlic butter. If you're not using this and you're just using regular butter, I would add like maybe some garlic powder and some salt and pepper. And then we're going to add on some of the Zatarain's blackened seasoning. And then I just put it in the air fryer on about 375 for 12 to 15 minutes, depending on the thickness of your salmon. Just want to check it for the like last couple minutes after 10 minutes and make sure you don't overcook it. To go with the salmon, we usually do some sort of like garlic parmesan pasta. Sometimes I do orzo or couscous, but the kids really like this pasta from Trader Joe's. It's like made with vegetables and it's a really fun shape. So I made the garlic parmesan pasta with that. And then I also made a can of green beans. And if you want the recipe for the garlic parmesan pasta, I will have it down in the description box. I'll have a video where I made that. Thursday night we strayed from the meal plan and we did grilled cheese and tomato soup. One of my biggest meal planning tips is to always have simple things like this that your family will enjoy for dinner. That'll keep you from like ordering takeout or like going and getting fast food or something. So we had gone to the aquarium early this day and the recipe that I had planned was in the crock pot and I didn't feel like prepping that at eight o'clock in the morning before we went to the aquarium. So I was like, we're just going to do grilled cheese and tomato soup. So that is what we did. Um, the kids did Havarti on their grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, Havarti and cheddar for Lily, Havarti and American for Elijah. And then I just did cheddar and American. I always like to do um, something with American on our grilled cheese sandwiches because the American just like there's something about it. It's like nostalgic. It melts and it's like just delicious. And then our favorite tomato soup is the Progresso Hardy tomato soup. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you got some new meal ideas. If you did, let me know what you plan on trying in the comments down below. And also make sure you leave me a smiley face emoji down there as well. I hope that y'all have had a great start to your new year. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!